here next topic that is seismic waves seismic waves that travels through the layer of the earth they usually results from an earthquake okay volcanic eruption or other exploration okay so most important thing is that when there will be a type of shaking or rolling okay so in that condition shaking and rolling that means there will be a little bit displacement between the tectonic plates okay so when this will happen then a type of s or p waves that would like to create okay and in that condition there will be friction okay there will be friction regarding to that the temperature of earth core that would like to increase okay so as usual you are seeing here structure of earth that means you can see that earth is just like as a sphere okay there are its main layers three or three layers that are main first one that is your inner core okay and the next one a little bit inner core that is the temperature that would like to be maximum okay and then a little bit less temperature that will be outer core and then there will be a little bit less that is mantle and the outer covering that we generally used to see that is your crust okay always remember that means crust crust that means relatively thin and rocky layer okay on earth that is known as crust okay so next is mantle mantle has the property of a solid but can flow very slowly yeah it's a like in molten state okay like magma okay yes also the third one that is your made from liquid nickel and it is your liquid nickel and iron okay outer core that is made up of liquid nickel and iron and at the last that the inner core that is made up of solid nickel and iron okay so that means we can say that our earth core that is made up of nickel and iron okay yes understand yes next topic is earthquakes earthquakes that happens that when large part of the earth crust and upper mantle they will start to move move slow suddenly okay yes okay and earthquake that occurs under ocean and seas that can cause tsunami okay you can understand tsunami in this way suppose that just take a bowl of water okay if you would like to shake that at the bottom so that means you are shaking that through bottom so that means you are applying force over there okay in that condition if you are applying force so 100% that the top water that would like to splash down okay yes sir so that's why that we can understand it is a very easy concept okay it is a very easy way to understand the concept of tsunami otherwise you can understand a large destructive wave caused by earthquake volcanic activity or landslides under water okay that is known as tsunami clear yes suppose when there will be earthquakes then two type of waves that would like to originate first one is p wave and second one is s waves okay yes so well, here i am going to explain you that what are the similarities okay so here you can see that p waves that's are longitudinal waves okay p waves that's are longitudinal wave and s waves they are transverse waves okay yes p waves that are faster than s waves okay that means s waves are slower and p waves that can travel through solid and liquid and s waves that can only travel through solid okay yes seismic waves are the type of waves which would like to follow refraction and reflection okay 
but refraction and refraction where refraction and refraction with respect to crust mantle and core okay yes understand core that yes. means inner part okay crust that means just outer okay or middle part between mantle and core that is crust and outer part after after mantle okay then crust will be there that means that they can change direction okay yes understand yes now next is detecting earthquake actually earthquake that can detect by a device known as seismometer or seismograph okay that means a piece of equipment that pick up the vibration in the ground okay that pick up the vibration in the ground clear yes sir a scientist can work out the location of an earthquake by calculating the time difference between the arrival of p waves and s waves okay that means how much time that p waves we would like to come and after how much time that s waves starts to come okay and the information that would like to collect three times okay in seismometer or seismograph and then we would like to compare that and then we will be able to find the exact location where the earthquake will be okay that means that portion or that part or that point is known as epicenter okay yes you can understand epicenter in this way suppose that here you are seeing that there is one seismometer position over here other seismometer position over here and the third one that is over red circle okay red point okay. so where all these circles would like to intersect that will be your point that is known as epicenter that means most probably that earthquake with high magnitude that will be there okay yes clear yes the seismometer will only work out how far the wave has traveled and not the direction okay by using the information from three seismometer you can calculate the epicenter which is where all the distances meet okay yes sir this process is known as triangulation okay this process is known as triangulation clear yes sir great